This is ABC 15 Mornings. Right now at 6, an update on the driver accused of shooting at a police officer yesterday on the I-17, closing down that interstate for hours. New information about the man accused of killing eight people at a FedEx facility in Indianapolis. Who raised the red flag last year warning police he could turn violent? And ready to roll up your sleeve, the two COVID vaccination clinics that are happening today. And we want to say good morning to you. It is now 6 o'clock on your Saturday morning. A beautiful start to the weekend. Thank you so much for joining us to get it going. I'm Megan Thompson. And I'm Mark Thompson. Megan, I'm looking off to my left. A big picture window. I'm starting to see the sun just peak uh, just a little bit, but uh, shaping up to be a pretty nice day so far. I would say so. We are right where we should be for this time of year, Mark. After we were tracking those above average temperatures, those days where we saw the 90s over and over again, something we're going to keep our eyes on. But first, we do want to warn you about some breaking news that we have. Actually, an update for you. The ramp from the 60 to I-10 appears to be back open. So that's some good news for you after a rollover crash. We brought you this as breaking news about an hour ago. This is video from around 430 this morning with an ABC 15 crew on the ground. The only vehicle involved hitting the median wall, rolling and then bursting into flames. DPS telling us everyone made it out OK and crews were able to get that fire under control pretty quickly. It's unclear right now what caused this crash and if impairment was a factor, we will continue to keep you posted on that one. As we look now at that most accurate forecast for you, like Mark was just mentioning, a beautiful start to the day right now. 59 degrees, the humidity 25%. The dew point 23 winds, they are calm, zero miles per hour. That is going to pick up today. So the high we're tracking is 86, which puts us right in the normal range for this time of year. 86 degrees is that 30 year average with that low in the 60s. Then the record is 100 degrees set back in the 1930s, so luckily we won't be anywhere near that. What we are tracking today, even though we aren't seeing any wind speeds at this hour, we do expect them to pick up in the early afternoon and evening hours. We're going to see sustained winds here in the valley between 10 and 15 miles per hour with gusts up to 20 miles per hour. Northern Arizona, a similar story. They're also seeing some rain right now in the state in northern Arizona. We're going to see when that could come our way. Still ahead in that seven day forecast mark. All right, Megan, thank you. And new this morning, more than 3 million people around the world have now died from complications linked to COVID-19. This is according to numbers from Johns Hopkins University. Now, in Arizona, the Department of Health Services reporting 845 new COVID cases yesterday. That brings our state's total number of cases since the start of the pandemic to more than 852,000. 30 more deaths have been linked to complications from the virus, bringing the total number of deaths to more than 17,000. The state is expected to release an update on these numbers. Uh, that will be this morning coming up at around 830. The Navajo Nation, meanwhile, has not reported any new COVID deaths in nearly a week. Yesterday marks six days in a row with no new deaths. The tribe is slowly reopening after coronavirus variants were confirmed on the reservations, uh, but safely uh, safety precautions, that is, uh, like a mask mandate and daily curfews, they are still in place. Looking to get your COVID vaccine today, Peoria is hosting a clinic from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. The site will administer the Pfizer vaccine, and you can register on the city of Peoria's website, PeoriaAZ.gov. Also today, there will be a vaccine event focusing on the underserved community at the Phoenix Sunny Slope Senior Center near 7th Street and Cave Creek. But you will need to make an appointment. You can call 888. 587 3647. Help is available in both English and Spanish. County health officials looking to help get our Spanish speaking community more vaccines. KJZZ reporting Maricopa County Public Health is teaming up with the Community Information Service 211 to offer a new Spanish language hotline with information about vaccines when it comes to getting them and having access to them. Latinos are towards the bottom in the county to get that access. Now to reach the service, call 211, then 271.
Police are investigating after someone shot at a police officer on the I-17 yesterday. This happening in the west part of the valley near the Greenway Road exit. The interstate shut down for much of the day. Phoenix police say that a motorcycle officer tried to pull over a suspect who was driving at a high rate of speed, but that suspect shot at the officer before speeding off and crashing into an enterprise truck and another truck at the exit. All those passengers and the officer are OK, but police officials telling us this shows the dangers that police face. Certainly it's troubling to think that someone would shoot a firearm at another person, no matter whether they're just a citizen or a police officer or, or anyone. Uh, and just with a total disregard for human life, when you think about how many people could be affected. Police say they recovered a handgun at the scene. As for the suspect, he was taken to the hospital for his injuries and then will eventually be arrested for aggravated assault. And we've got an update now on that mass shooting at the FedEx facility in Indianapolis, Indiana, as investigators continue to search for a motive. This morning, we're learning more about the suspect. The 19 year old former employee allegedly shot and killed eight people in less than two minutes Thursday before taking his own life. We've learned that the suspect's mom actually called police concerned about him last year, saying that he had the potential for violence and might try to commit suicide by cop. Police, they are still in investigating the motive for this shooting. The identities of the victims have not been released, but we do know they range in age from 19 to 74. Since the deadly shootings uh, near Atlanta last month, there have been at least 51 mass shootings in the United States. Protests overnight in Chicago after police released body camera video showing an officer shooting and killing 13 year old Adam Toledo. Officers say Toledo had a gun. Video shows the boy throwing the gun away moments before he was shot and new video overnight from our sister station in Tucson about 100 protesters taking to the streets last night protesting the shooting death of Dante Wright in Minneapolis. The 20 year old father shot during a traffic stop. The former officer who has since resigned yelled taser but instead grabbed her handgun Tucson police blocking streets as protesters march and chant. Many say there's no excuse for mixing a gun with a taser. Our own Claudia Rupsic going in depth for you, talking with a former officer about how this could happen. The mix up seems unthinkable. Minnesota police officer Kim Potter means to deploy her taser and instead fires her handgun, killing 20 year old Dante Wright. And it is real hard to understand how it happens because the two weapons are so different. Kevin Robinson worked for the Phoenix Police Department for 36 years. He was the assistant chief and is now an instructor at ASU School of Criminology and Criminal Justice. Where it fits in your hand. He says the taser was specifically designed to look and feel different from a gun. Everything is different about it. The weight, the color, the feel, the handle, it's just, it, it, it is just different. The taser is lighter with a different grip and is usually yellow. Another thing that sets them apart is placement. The gun is supposed to be holstered on the officer's dominant side, the taser on the other side. So when you take your taser out, you're, there's more movement involved. There is a, there is a, a conscious effort. According to the New York Times, there have been at least 15 cases of police officers mixing up guns and tasers in the past 20 years. The two are so different that it shouldn't happen. The maker of taser, Axon, is in Scottsdale. In a statement to ABC 15, the company referenced those rare cases, saying, quote, over the years, Exxon has implemented numerous features and training recommendations to reduce the possibility of these incidents occurring. They say features include a different grip, weight, and color, and an LED control panel that lights up when the safety is taken off. You do that for a reason. You do that so that you cannot get the two mixed up. Robinson says training is key. But that's why police departments train as much as they do. Train, train, train some more, then train some more after that. Because in a time of stress, you want to revert back to your training. Robinson says the training record of Kim Potter, who has since resigned, should be part of the shooting investigation. In Scottsdale, Claudia Rupsic, ABC 15, Arizona. Claudia, thank you for going in depth for us and seeing so many stories of gun violence and mass shootings. 
it can be traumatizing. There is help out there on your screen right now. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. They have a free crisis counseling hotline. There's also a free app called Transcend developed by the National Mass Violence and Victimization Resource Center. It has several self help resources for you to access. Arizona's congressional representatives crossing the aisle to support the uh a bill that will keep the A-10 Warthog attack aircraft in operation. Davis Moten Air Force Base in Tucson is home to the largest fleet of these very unique aircraft here. Uh, largest fleet in the entire country housed there. The Air Force has planned to retire 44 of them last year, but the plan was postponed after Congress passed the National Defense Authorization Act. Next Wednesday, Phoenix City Council will choose the next vice mayor. They choose one council member to fill the role every year. Right now, District 5 Councilwoman Betty Guardado serves in that role, Mark. An Avondale mentorship program connecting students with firefighters to get them the support they need. The program is fairly new. It started the year before COVID hit, and even with online school, the guidance and follow through these firefighters. They provide, um, it, it is pro is proving to be a game changer for a lot of teenagers who need a trusted adult in their lives right now. We're not parents, we're not teachers. You know, we're, we're able to build that trust and relationship. Like I personally, my father left and for me, he's kind of like a father figure. He's been there and it's nice to have that support. Now, during the pandemic, firefighter Daniel Guerrero even checked on a student at home after he hadn't logged into his virtual classroom for a couple of days. The students say that they are grateful for that kind of support. All right, the time now is 6.11 on your Saturday morning. Still ahead today, Prince Philip will be laid to rest. Coming up, we've got live coverage from Windsor Castle. Plus, as more places start to reopen with less restrictions, tips for calculating your risk of contracting COVID-19. We'll tell you how you do that coming up. Watch ABC 15 Arizona on your schedule. Stream the latest news and weather by searching ABC 15 on Roku, Fire TV, Android TV, and Apple TV. Well, today you can visit a U.S. National Park for free. It is International Park Prescription Day, a part of National Park Week. The event is to highlight the connection between health and the great outdoors. Of course, there are three national parks here in Arizona, Sorraro, Petrified Forest, and, of course, the Grand Canyon. Megan? Mark, are you a hiker, by the way? Um, I am when my hips aren't hurting, but when my <laughs> right. hips hurt, I'm not. You know, I'm not the biggest hiker myself. I know people in Arizona, we have the best hiking trails yeah. all around the state. My problem is I feel like I'm always looking down because I'm not skilled at it. I'm trying to walk through all of the rocks and go up, and then I look up, and we've already made it, and I'm tired. So I prefer, <laughs> like, a nice forest trail, you know, oh, walking yeah. along the exactly. Grand Canyon. So whatever works for you in that most accurate forecast will work because the temperatures are beautiful. Whether or not you are a hiker or you're a nice walker like someone like me and Mark right now. We're in the 50s here in the valley for that hiking forecast. The sunset is a little after seven tonight, 75 degrees then. So beautiful today. We will get into those 80s today. Something to keep in mind if you're going to hike not in the morning, not in the evening, but right in the midday. You want to be careful. You want to make sure you're hydrating, putting on that sunscreen, taking plenty of water with you because despite the beautiful day ahead, we are going to warm into the 80s and we are going to see that UV index right around an eight, which means your burn time is around 15 minutes. So the high today is 86 degrees. That means that we're going to be right on track with the average for this time of year, finally, and nowhere near that record of 100 degrees. As we look around Arizona, some changes though, moving into the state already at this hour this morning in Flagstaff, 50 degrees. The high today, Sedona 65 and Sholo 58 degrees is the high we
we are tracking there and you notice some storm chances come into play. 40% chance in Flagstaff, 30 in Sedona and 20% in Sholo. Let's take you to Futurecast to see what we are tracking here. We are already seeing, like I mentioned, some rain and snow activity to the very far north of us. As I move Futurecast into motion, you'll start to see this low pressure system moving in here and then also some activity along the rim. Then very early into tomorrow morning, that system moves off only to come back again, potentially bringing us some rain activity in our state. And as we look towards the middle of the week, more windy conditions and wildfire concerns. So something to keep in mind, we've got two systems moving through that are bringing some changes for us here in the valley too. that disturbance. That low pressure system is going to bring the wind gusts for us today ahead of that potential rain chance gusts up to 20 miles per hour here in the valley and also gusts up to 20 miles per hour in northern Arizona for so for your seven day forecast 86 the high to date breezy today and sunny then tomorrow 85 or it's just a degree drop and we're seeing a 10% chance for rain here in the valley. Then as we look to Monday as that disturbance moves out. Our temperatures warm back up again. 90 degrees on Monday, 93 on Tuesday. But that second disturbance I was showing you comes back in, brings windy conditions into our state with those wildfire concerns really ramping up. 92 then before the 80s come back Thursday, 87 Friday, 88 degrees. All looks good to me, Megan. Thank you. Crowded restaurants and theaters, they are beginning to return, even with vaccines up and case numbers down. Doctors say the risk of catching COVID won't go away anytime soon. So to stay safe, experts say that you should focus on circulation, crowd side and distance. Here's our very own Kaylee O'Kelly with more. It's very clear that the primary mode of transmission of COVID-19 is airborne. MIT professor Martin Bazant says we should think about COVID the way we do secondhand smoke. The risk of secondhand smoke, just like the risk of airborne transmission, becomes reduced when the space is large. So, you know, having a high ceilings in, in a room is good. Having open windows is good. Ventilation is very important. There's an online COVID-19 indoor safety guideline to help you calculate risk. Basically, the worst thing is a long period of time in a small space with large number of people with poor ventilation. The CDC says COVID is not an airborne disease, rather a respiratory threat. But the viral particles can stay in the air. And airborne spread is a concern. There have been studies that show that it can stay in the air for, you know, upwards of five, ten minutes or even longer. Uh, and so you might not know you're walking through an area that's infected uh, when you're not seeing anybody around. Events like concerts or movies do come with the possibility of virus spread. When you're laughing or you're yelling or if you're in an indoor concert, people are yelling and having a good time. And so things can travel further when you're screaming and yelling. And so these are the things that you want to uh, be cognizant of. And that's why masks and social distancing are not going away. We're getting there and we're getting there through these measures that have proven to work. And let's not stop halfway. And that is uh, Kaylee O'Kelly reporting some other suggestions uh, to lower your risk. Uh, sitting close to windows or doors and limiting your time inside, Megan. Mark 620 now reading is going to the dogs and the cats and whoever else is in the Arizona Humane Society shelter today. Your kids have a chance to practice their reading skills on some adorable four legged friends. Are you looking for something to do today, especially for your kids who are animal lovers? Maverick Graham is joining us from the Arizona Humane Society with a guest star, of course, to talk about the Reading for Fun event. Maverick, can you tell us about what's going on today? Absolutely, yeah. So today we have our Reading for Fun event, which is basically you get to come in for an hour and read to our little kennel uh, cats and dogs um, and really just get to relax and get to know them a little bit, let them kind of have some fun while you have a little bit of fun as well. And who do you have with you today too? This is probably one of the pets that your kids could read to. Absolutely, so this is Cricket. Now Cricket is a little 10 year old Chihuahua pup that uh, came in as a stray about a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and 
he is just a little bald. You'd never guess that he is 10 years old with the amount of energy that he has. This is the most calm I've seen him in a while. Um, but yeah, he's just a, one of our many little adoptable pets here that we have at Arizona Humane Society. And what is so important about this event when it comes to the kids reading to the dogs? What does it do to help the cats, the dogs who are in the shelter? Absolutely. So um, here at the shelter, it's kind of a different environment than a lot of dogs and cats are used to, which we try to make it as fun and engaging as possible and make it a not stressful experience for them. So um, allowing people to come in and allowing the kids to come in and read to our uh, kennel pets here is a good way to help them kind of relax and calm down. It's a good little bit of enrichment for them as well as for the kids. It's a non a non-judgmental, non-stressful place for the kids to practice their reading as well. Um, because, you know, these little puppies are not going to judge you if you, you know, struggling on a word or something like that. They're just going to enjoy that time. So it's really fun, just stress-free environment to help them uh, relax. So supportive, those little dogs and cats, I'm sure, through the process of these kids learning how to read, getting the words out properly. So tell us the details of the event. If someone wants to sign up today and get in there, what do they need to know? Absolutely. Yeah. So the event goes on from uh, 830 to 930. Um, and essentially it is for eight year olds to 11 year olds. And um, due to CDC restrictions and everything, we have to make sure that we are being safe in here. So it's limited to five participants. Each of those participants can um, have an adult supervisor or uh, an adult companion, if they will, um, for that event. But um, if they don't want to have an adult, they don't have to. We will have instructors there that are helping to facilitate all of that. And then they can come back and pick up at 930. Um, and we have it, if you can't sign up today, we also have one next Saturday, as well as May 8th and May 15th. So there are plenty of opportunities to sign up. That is awesome. So many opportunities to get that reading practice in and also to spend some time with those shelter pets. Maverick Graham from the Arizona Humane Society, thank you so much for telling us about this. We'll be sure to put all this information in this story on abc15.com. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Great information. Great program there. And this morning we are honoring the life and legacy of Prince Philip, the service that is happening this morning in his memory. We will dip in coming back. 